Well, hey, guys, Silly Tuck here. Welcome back to another episode of uh, ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling. I'm going to take a sip of water. Hold on. This was really badly timed. So, we're hot off the heels of uh, that, that show. What? What show was that? Uh, oh, you know, the one that we just did. Uh, uh, Anarchy Rules, right? That one? Yeah, yeah, I, I know what I'm talking about. We're hot off the heels of Anarchy Rules. Rules, not Anarchy Rule. Anarchy Rules. And we're one month. One month. Well... Yeah, I guess four shows away. This one, next week, week after, that, yeah. So we are a whole month, four full shows away from our biggest show of the year, November to Remember 1998. I've got plans. Will they line up? I don't know. I've already had a wrench thrown in one of my plans, but that's okay. I've sorted it out. You'll, you'll see what I mean later. Um... A little bit down the road, you'll see. Um, I don't know if we're going to gain money this month. This is the episode in which we see if we gain money or not. We'll also be able to check out all those fancy new people. Isn't that right? Uh -huh. Um. R random side note, uh, for those who are watching my 01 series with 370... Um, so, you know that whole thing with the fucking video or whatever not really lining up? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I can't fix it. It just keeps happening. So, like, me and 370 are fucking scratching our heads right now trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Um, the next Raw that goes up, uh, either will just be the full episode, um, or if 370 wants to, um... We could do some kind of recap of the show. I, I, I just don't know. Because... It's frustrating to me, um, because, I mean, I got called out on it, and I was like, ah, I will fucking sort itself out, we'll just do this differently, and it didn't fix it, and it hasn't been fixed the entire time, so I, I don't know what to do, really, I'm just fucking screwed, um, basically, um, what's, what's the best way to describe it? technical limitations despite the fact that this apparently should be better than the laptop I previously recorded on uh, sure uh, they're uh, kind of restricting that series that's why things are looking fucking weird it can't keep up with discord and recording at the same time apparently so the fuck do I know right I'm a fucking moron uh, so I apologize to everybody who, who has been uh, attempting to enjoy that series um at least I hope you guys can still enjoy it a little bit, even though it's kind of fucked up. Um, but me and 370 talked about it last night, uh, and we'll talk about it probably um, after this video goes up. Um, and, and a little bit or whatever about what we want to do. Um, and then either that raw will go up as normal and we'll have an update video coming after, or that video itself will be a little bit of an update thing. I, I, I don't want to digress too much into that. All right. I've already talked too much about a different series on this series. Uh, we are no longer in Hammerstein. We are in the Washington Avenue Armory. Uh, hold on here. I wanted to check something because, okay. Washington Avenue Armory is worth, uh, 12.9 K, right? For 4,000 people. What do we get in Hammerstein? Uh, okay, hold on here. Let's do some quick quick maths, as they say. So hold on here. We got the 4680. Let's divide it by 2600. Okay, so that's about. We're spending about a dollar point eight per person, as long as I've done my math right. New York, Washington Avenue Armory. 4,300, or no, sorry, it'd be 12,900 divided by 4,300. Then we're spending about $3 a person. And it's not a hotbed. I think we're going to go back to Hammerstein, just, just for just for the bit, okay? And we'll, we'll try to figure out what we're going to do going forward. Uh, but I'm going to stick to Hammerstein for now. I'm going to save that real quick. Without further ado, we've already been like five minutes in this fucking episode, let's just do it. We're kicking things off the only way we know how. With the number one contender and the world champion, 
So Rob Van Dam comes down to the ring. And he says, there we go. I did it. I, I fucking said I'd do it, and I did it. I am now number one contender. And I know that Jerry's fought a number one contender in the past. Uh, Bam Bam, who's a little bit... A little bit of a, what's the word to say, uh, a little bit aggressive. But Jerry, I wanted to ask you to come down here right now so we I could look at you uh, man to man. And and Jerry does, you know, he's a pretty stand-up world champion. Uh, he comes down, he's got his belt over his shoulder. Uh, Van Dam says, Jerry, I, I uh, you know, I, I don't want to waste your time, obviously. You, you're preparing to uh, take on uh, a buddy. I guess, of mine, uh, Steven Regal tonight in the main event. Everybody stick around for that. But, Jerry, I wanted to talk to you for a minute because you've heard your entire time as champion, you're not big enough, you're not good enough, you don't have the look, whatever. You've been hearing that your whole career, let alone as long as you've held that championship. And I wanted everybody here in this arena, everybody watching at home, everybody in the back, and for you to know, that you definitely deserve that championship. You are... You, you are a gamer. I'll tell you that much. You put in all the effort you can. And most of the time, you walk out victorious because of it. And I wanted to give you a round of applause. And he does. He, he claps for Rob Van Dam. And, you know, there's a standing ovation. And Lynn says, well, Rob, I, I, I thank you. But what, what is this all about? Why did you call me out here? Because it couldn't have just been to congratulate me. You could have done that from, you know, here in the ring while I was in the back. So what's the deal? Van Dam replies, and he says, Jerry, I wanted to see the look in your eyes when I told you that. I wanted you to, I wanted to see what it looked like when I told you that you were a deserving world champion. And that I wanted to see the look in your eyes when I told you that it wasn't going to matter come November to remember. Deserving world champion or not, whether you think you're the best in the world, whether you think you're just a regular guy, whether you think you're a badass like Bam Bam and hardcore icon like Sandman, like a fucking mental case like Sabu, whether you think you're the franchise, the heart, it doesn't matter, Jerry. Because you're not messing with any of them. You're facing the best talent this company has to offer. The unbeatable talent in this company. You are facing Rob Van Dam, Mr. Saturday Night. The whole fucking show. I want you to have fun with that belt, buddy. I'll be back for it. And with that, Van Dam leaves, sending a very, very clear message to world champion Jerry Lynn. Jerry doesn't look shaken, though. You know, he's he's been through this before. Same old game. Um, but, uh, you know, in the main event tonight, he's got Steven Regal, the guy who lost to Van Dam uh, at Anarchy Rules. Uh, Van Dam beat him to become number one contender. And tonight, you know, we've got a little bit of a very interesting matchup, I'd say. Jerry Lynn versus Steven Regal. Let's move forward. It's a match. It's a 48D+. Plus. Mike Awesome's a fucking animal. Uh, extremely short match. Mike Awesome beats Darren Drozdov in 32 seconds with an awesome bomb. I, I don't think I need to say anything else there. It's, it's, it's a massacre. Mike Awesome is an animal. And with that, you know, we, we head into our next segment, and it's Lance Storm, Chris Candido, and Don Marie. And they are feeling good. Chris Candido picks up the mic, and he says, That's right. We did it. We did, we did it. I don't think any of you ever thought we'd do it. After we were down 2 nothing, you thought that maybe, maybe the Hardys would, would sweep us, you know? Or maybe you, you thought a little bit more of us. Maybe you thought it'd be 3-1. Maybe even 3-2. Maybe you thought we'd choke at the end. But let's be honest. We're stormtroopers. We don't miss. When we hit our target, and 
let's be honest, we have always, always hit our target. We're unbeatable. Lance, you got something to say? Lance takes the mic and he says, Matter of fact, I do. And if I can be serious for a moment. Bubba Ray, Devon, you best be preparing the tapes and getting to the gym. Because looking at the both of you, you haven't hit there for a long time. Look at Chris here. Hell, look at me. Look at the two of you. We heard earlier from a guy who said that somebody wasn't fitting to be champion. Quite obviously, you guys, the championship isn't the only thing not fitting on you. But, realities aside, you two are very capable. You're athletes, I guess. You're fighters, how about that? But you two better be ready, because... We will be. Enough said. Long live the Empire. Long live the Empire? That's a catchphrase now. Long live the Empire. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's the number one contenders for the Tag Team Championships. Lance Storm, Chris Candido, the Stormtroopers with Dom Marie. Uh, good little promo there. Moving forward. It's a 68C plus. Taz is in the ring. And he says... <sighs> and again, I am victorious. Y you'd seriously think that I'd enjoy it or I'd get used to it, but I don't. There's no competition here for me. Paul Heyman, I, I threatened to do it before, and you know what? I'm, I'm thinking about it now. I may just take this belt and roam. Roam, you know? Not, not roam, roam, but I may just roam. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll head out to Cali. Maybe I'll head up north. You know, I, uh, I've talked about that before. Maybe I'll head down to Mexico. Fight some luchadors. Oh, we haven't had any of them around here for a long time. Paul says, Alright, listen, Taz. You want your competition? I'll find you competition, okay? Don't leave with my belt. Alright? Because then I'd have to fucking sue you, and that would suck. Taz says, Paul, I've given you a chance, and you never responded. Paul said, Taz, that was before last night, before I saw that you genuinely do have the props to beat everybody on this roster. You are genuinely a freak of nature, and I think, almost certainly, whenever the time comes that you do drop that television championship, it, you would, and Taz just cuts him off and says, which I will never do at this rate. This belt is... Not leaving my waist. Maybe I'll start collecting dust. Maybe it'll leave a mark on me when I'm tanning. You know? A nice big championship sized imprint on my body to show people even when that belt isn't around I'm a champion because Paul this is what you forced me to do now. I'm at the point where there's nobody left. And Paul says, I hear you, Taz. I hear you, alright? Stop. Listen. If you ever, alright, if you ever, lose that championship, I think everyone here is in agreement that you would have a shot at the world championship waiting you. But now comes November to remember, and what kind of promoter would I be if I didn't have one of my champions defend at our biggest show of the year? Why? Why? I'd be Vince McMahon, wouldn't I? But that doesn't matter. That's besides the point. I'll find you your competition. Matter of fact, he'll be here next week. See you then. Taz looks fucking happy. You know, he's finally getting competition. Who's it going to be? We don't know. I, I can't tell you. I, I literally cannot tell you. It would, it would be really stupid. But uh, we're going to move forward. It's uh, a match here. And, uh, you know, it's between the Sandman and Just Incredible. This new rejuvenized Sandman. And holy fuck, Just Incredible beats him. Chastity interferes. Just Incredible rolls up the Sandman. About 11 minutes beats him. It, it's a battle of canes. You know, kendo sticks. They just beat each other to death nearly with the two of them. And the Incredible just rolls him up. One, two, three. After Chastity gets the distraction off. And, like... 
Sandman's fucking pissed, and we're, we're gonna see here in a couple seconds how pissed he is. But, oh, shit, it, it's, it's a little while in the making, I won't lie. We see Matt and Jeff Hardy backstage, you know, and they're cutting a promo for, for like, a DVD or something like that, right? Because we don't really have a Titan Tron, but I always just say they're cutting promos backstage. Anyways, Matt and Jeff say, well, that could have gone better, couldn't it? That's okay, though. We're, we're young, all right? We understand that there's room to grow. There's always room to grow. But there's more room to grow now than there will be 10 years down the line. This, though, is the start of something really special. Wouldn't you say, Matt? Yeah, I, I, I would, Jeff. I think that, you know, Lance Storm, Chris Candido, as much as people don't really approve of them, and it's hard to say that we really approve of them, it's hard to say we even like them, but they're definitely wrestlers. They're very good at what they do, and they beat us. Call it lack of experience, call it the pep talk from Douglas, call it us just not being good, call it them being good, whatever you want, alright? We lost. And that kind of sucks, but again, as Jeff said, it's not a bad thing. There will be room to grow, room to improve. And, and then all of a sudden, just two fucking dudes... Who who the who the fuck are they? They just beat the shit out of Jeff and Matt. And, and the dude who's conducting the interview, I don't know, let's go with its fucking uh styles, I guess. He's like Uh oh god, who who the who the who the fuck are you? What the fuck is this? And the in and the and the one guy says, uh my name's Sexton Hardcastle. Everybody's and Joey's like Sext Sexton Hard Cat Hard Castle? What? What? And the other dude takes the mic and says, I'm Christian Cage. And we heard this is where the This is where the young guns like to go, huh? Meet the suicide blondes. And they just leave and Joey Styles is like, uh, okay, well, shit, let's get some attention here for Jeff and Matt, who are still on the ground. And, uh, yeah, that, the, the, the Suicide Blondes, I guess? They're, they're here in ECW. Who are they? What are their goals? Why did they attack the Hardys? We'll, we'll wait till next week. Like, come on, you, you not know how this works by now? All right, we're backstage. Uh, Tommy Dreamer's talking to Paul Heyman. You know, he's got Beulah with him. Oh, God, that new picture for Beulah, it's so great. Um, you know, Tommy says to Paul, he says, You knew, didn't you? You, you? Like, we come in halfway through the conversation, so it's like, You knew, didn't you? You, you knew the whole time they turned on each other. Paul's like, yeah. Yeah, but with the other, with the other circumstance now, with, with the added factor, they, they, they kind of destroyed themselves. Tommy says, "Why didn't Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell us? All right, there was there was plenty of time that you could have told us. All right, and and taken the pressure away from me. You know what this means to me." Paul says, "Tommy, if I had told you, it could have changed the results." Okay. If they don't have to work hard. They wouldn't turn. They wouldn't go against each other. It wouldn't corrupt them like it has corrupted. And all of a sudden, the Sandman fucking barges in with Woman. And Woman's just like, Paul Heyman, have you seen this bullshit? Did you see what just happened out there? And Paul's like, the the the, the just incredible beat beat Sandman? What, what, what about it? And Woman's like, don't play fucking smart with me, Heyman. All right? You know what Sandman wants. You know what my machine wants. Heyman says, oh, fuck's sakes. Fine, all right? You get, get you off my back, all right? Sandman versus Credible next week rematch, all right? There, there you go, there you go. Away, away with both of you. And so, boom, there's a match set up for next week. It's the Sandman versus, uh, the fuck is that, what the fuck is that guy called? Just Incredible. I didn't need to, I didn't, I didn't need to think about it. I know who's on my roster just fine. Uh, the Sandman, that's not the Sandman, the Sandman 
just incredible. Shebang. That's next week. It's a rematch. Um, and so just like that, they leave, you know, Tom and Tom, Paul, and Beulah go back to their conversation, and we kind of zoom out. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe it's time for our main event. It's Steven Regal versus Jerry Lynn, non-title, but going to be one hell of a fight, I like to think. So 64C, because they don't click. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. I thought this would have been really great. But in 1927, after a technical, really okay match, I guess, from everything I'm reading here, it's okay. Uh, there's some awkwardness. Lynn straps in that cross arm breaker and he fucking wins. Jerry Lynn, our world champion, again, fucking puts down somebody who says they would beat him. Ridiculous stuff. Jerry Lynn fucking improves as always. He's he's the man, alright? At 30, whatever, he's the fucking man. And if you're wondering why I'm glossing over our main event, it's because up next is some really fucking big news. So, afterwards, Jerry Lynn, you know, stands up or whatever. Regal's kind of attending to his arm. Regal stands up. And Jerry goes over to him. You know, holds out his hand. Steve takes it, says a few words. Jerry pulls him in, hugs Steve, and Jerry leaves. What? Regal, Regal says here, give me, give me a mic. And he says, over the past year-ish, I've had the opportunities. I won't say they're good or bad to wrestle here in a place where maybe some people had been deprived of wrestling. He had seen trash bag brawlers and scum alike, but that wasn't the point, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to take them away, to make this a haven for professional wrestling, for wrestlers, the grappler. That's why I can look at that man right there, walking up that ramp, world champion Jerry Lynn, and know that this company is currently in good hands. I'm leaving. I've been offered a contract I can't refuse by the WWF. And and I know and I know that some of you may see my departure as a betrayal, but just remember I was only here to help this place. And this place has been helped. My job here is done. But I'm leaving with a gift. I'm bringing to you one last beautiful masterpiece. One last flicker of a new era, of a new beginning for this company. And he'll be here next week. Thank you all so much for my time here. Have a good life. Overall, oh, I didn't click it. Overall, all right, show sixty six C plus up in seven. So yeah, uh, Steve's gone. Can I take a drink of water for a sec? I'm taking a drink of water for a sec. So yeah, Steve's gone. Um, which is okay. I mean, I knew what I was doing with Steve next, but um, I've, I've rewritten it into a different. Uh, vain, I guess, to say. You know what I mean? I, I, I rewrote it so it worked. Um, oh, it's Halloween! Ooh, spooky, scary skeletons. Um, what do we got going on around here? Hardcore TV, the show is awesome. That's good. Steve Carino's on the rise. Oh, yeah, I should bring Carino back here, probably at the start of next year. Will he come back? We might have to bring him back after, uh... Excuse me, after, um... Uh, November to remember. He'd have a nice little, maybe, nine-month run in that company, I think. Uh, but yeah, so, Regal's on his way out. I don't know if I have the user thing here for it. User log, maybe? No. Oh, what was that? That was weird looking. Uh, decisions diary, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, so... Oh. What? Where's the thing here where it shows... 
Steve Regal. Contract. Negotiate. Yeah, there it is. So there's there's the contract he's being offered. He'll be on his way out. And uh, whatever, you know, it's been an all right run here in the company with him. Um, I never really ever planned to put the belt on Regal. He pretty much always did what I wanted him to do. Um, but I did have something else planned for him, and I think you guys might have just seen what I had planned for him, but that's okay, because he'll be here next week. Um, let's go, let's go forward today, and let's see, let's see the end of the month stuff, because, like, why not, I guess, right? That seems like it's a smart d decision. I don't know. This episode's already gone pretty long. Um, there's, there's Gumbo Malone. He kind of looks like a shit Jerry Lawler, in my opinion. Um... But I, I think I think things are shaping up pretty well for um, November to remember. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please do, as always. I, I love to hear that stuff. I love to hear about how much of a moron I am. Um, always sad to see somebody leave, but, but it's interesting, right? Like, that's why I chose to do a company like this. If I wanted to do something where I thought I'd be able to have control over everybody, I'd give myself a ton of money or something like that. Um, but... Wow, there's a lot of shit going down here. Wow, okay, hold on. Alright, well, okay, well, hold on. Let's check out Halloween Havoc here. Halloween Havoc, Hogan beat Giant, got the world title back. Scott Hall defeated Sting. Harlem Heat defeated Egocentric. Isn't that? Yeah, that's fucking Chavo and Hooven, dude. Ah! Um, Eddie Guerrero defeats Chris Jericho to retain the U.S. belt. Uh, Dean Malenko defeats Riggs. Perry Saturn defeats Lodi. Uh, Justin, Justin Liger beats Evan Carragas. Carragas? Courageous, I believe it's pronounced. Courageous. Yeah, it's Courageous. Uh, D-Boy Smith beats Hugh Morris. Glacier Nurse Miller defeat the Public Enemy. Uh, that's a alright show, and it got alright ratings. And there's New World Champion. It's Hogan again. Um, Liger got hurt badly. Minor concussion. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, Vader's re-signing the WF. So it's Blackjack Wyndham, uh, Hawk re-signing, WWC, uh, what'd that say there? El Tejano's gone. Promotion of no, is he popular? Oh shit, very, very much not popular. Uh, probably really popular in Mexico, I don't care to go back and check though. Uh, yes, like the Jackals being re-upped, Great Sasuke, uh... Pantera is out of Azteca. How over is he? I'm now looking at, like, talent that I don't even really have room for. Um, if extension rumor, it's Russo. They're going to bring Russo back. WF Heat, there's there's that if you care for, like, five seconds. Um, Toyota, Nova to re-sign with JPW. What? They're letting go of the Giant? Holy shit, the Fed's about to pick up a fucking gamer. Uh, Eight Ball and Skull. Wait, did I read that wrong? Looks like the company maybe on his boat. Yeah, that's that's literally a thing that happens when, like, yeah, you're fucking gone. Um, wow, that's crazy. I didn't think they'd release him, considering he was literally just their world fucking champion, like, a month ago. Um, what else we got here? Wow, a lot of contracts up right now. Uh, Ludwig Borga, <laughs> Ludwig fucking Borga, uh, PCW rejection, shit, shit, might be, uh, no, Rhino's, Rhino's got still one more gig, and it's out in Europe, we're gonna leave him, we're gonna leave him for now, uh, Trent Acid, Aguila, is that Robbie Rage, wasn't he, yeah, Robbie Rage team with Kenny Chaos, that's why I know that name. The Sandman Declaration. He's carrying ECW all by himself. No, you're not, mate. Um, Chetty resigning. Mike Hogan Bush to resign. Jesus Christ, there's so many fucking deals up. What the fuck? All right, cool. Whatever. What do we got here? We got a whole bunch of contract shit. Vader's getting his thing extended. Sasuke, Copeland. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We will definitely be re-upping Meanie, especially since... I literally just got like a really I don't know I don't want to say good angle for Meanie, but I've got I've got Stevie now right I've got somebody to pair him with. Let's throw him down for uh, two years probably travel not covered. I like that I don't mind that. That seems like a good deal to me. Um, let's go check out the new talents. Why don't we? 
news. Uh, uh, and I think that's all it right there. But again, I like to do it. I'm, I'm weird. I like to do it like this just in case something is off or something. Do we have any deaths last month? That guy. Oh, no. Pepe. Can we go back and check all the deaths? Oh, wow. Ah, oh, it was fucking loud. Wow, I didn't even, like, ever check this before. Yeah, Killer Kowalski died. That was sad. Um, any months where, like, a whole bunch of fucking deaths happened? Wow, this one. Luthez. Oh, yeah, Mr. Fuji. I remember that. When Mr. Fuji died, I got upset by that. All right, November, uh, what do we got here? Uh, random incidents. What the hell are random incidents? I'm being distracted, guys. Uh, oh, like, MMA fights. Oh, yeah, Ole Anderson came back. And I would, like, totally pick him up, but he's way too much money. I'd pick him up, and I'd fucking throw him backstage, and I'd say, you are my road agent. Oh, yeah, Sonny Poe's nude. This was fucking crazy. Sonny Poe's nude, and look at this fucking pop bump. Bang! Holy shit! <laughs> Sonny side up my ass. Um, but yeah, that's, that's crazy stuff. All right, so let's quickly look here at, uh, oh, crap. Let's quickly look here at the new workers before I sign off here. Um, Chase Stevens, who's that? Why do I know that name? Uh, Chase Stevens, he's protege of Tracy Smothers, FBI guy, possibly, maybe. I don't think he's very good, though. Uh, Brent Albright, he was, uh, one of the fucking, like, guys of um the uh what do you call it class the ovw group um johnny fair play i know that name too i don't know if that's because he's super controversial or some of that there's unibrowed matt striker um yeah yeah he's a guy uh al catraz are you fucking joking god damn what the hell uh, oh, Charmel, Booker T's wife. She hot? Yeah, she's kind of hot. Um, that's pretty cool. And this guy, Susumi Mochizuki. Mochizuki? I guess so. Uh, apparently he's currently the NWA World Welterweight Champion. No, he's fucking not. Uh, overall, though, pretty good month. Uh, a lot of crazy shit happening there. Uh, but, we're, again, we're gearing up November to remember. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Silly Talk. Signing out.